So I want to talk briefly about this, this subject of racism in business. And I think it's important to start out by saying that as long as racism exists within society, it's going to exist in business. And, you know, it's funny because I, I really don't know why people act like the subject is so taboo that we can't talk about it. Um, it's amazing how people will even pretend as if what I'm talking about isn't true. That, oh, racism it doesn't happen in business and all this kind of stuff. Um, it's amazing. And I say that because are we going to be honest about these things or are we just going to ignore facts? You know, business has a lot of powerful transformative properties. There are so many things that we can do within business uh, that can really change society for the better. And I would even argue that the way business is now, big business, corporate American business, it is the determining um uh, factor in how society goes right now, I would say. That's my opinion. Now, you may agree with that or, or disagree with that, but please don't disagree with me on this reality of racism in business. I'm going to give you a true story, you guys. And, I, and, you know, you've heard me talk about my involvement or at least, you know, learning the network marketing industry through a company. Um, when I first got involved with this stuff, it was in 99. And we, we were building out here in L.A. mostly. And, um, you know, my mother was actually one of my business partners. She signed up and she sponsored a lady who worked with her, who happened to be a white lady. She lived out in Orange County. Now, those of us who are from L.A., we understand that Orange County is a highly segregated section. I mean, you know, it's a lot of people out there um, of one ethnicity. And so Orange County is a different city from L.A., Los Angeles. And so we, 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 we were attending most of the meetings for that company in L.A. Um, one of the most dynamic speakers in the industry at that time and still to this day um, was speaking and training one of, you know, one of the, the top earners in the industry at that time and even more so now, so many years later. Um, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Byron Nelson. I give him so much props because of all the knowledge that he's dropped um, and, and all the, the people that he's helped throughout the years just teaching this industry how it's done, what works, what doesn't work, and really being an example. You know what I'm saying? And, and so that's, that's uh, where I want to start off here. My mother recruits a lady from Orange County. Um, she's pretty excited about the business. And she brings her sister with her to a meeting in LA. Her sister, not that impressed. Okay. Not that impressed. Um, you know, she was willing to be a customer. She wouldn't try services out. And, you know, one of the reasons I led out by talking about Miss Mr. Mr. Nelson, who, you know, you can probably tell, I still have a ton of respect for him to, to this, this day. Rarely, did I ever bring anyone to a meeting where he was presenting, speaking, training, and they didn't come away from that meeting um, either wanting to be in the business or looking for their checkbook? Very rarely. You know what I'm saying? He was that good. He, he was that awesome of a speaker and a presenter to where people could just tell that, you know what? Yeah, if I get in this business, if I treat it right, if I give it a serious shot, I think I can see myself making money here. He, 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 he was one of those uh, cats still is to, to this, this day. And yet when the sister came to the meeting, she wasn't all that impressed. Fine. Sometimes that's just how the game goes. Every now and then, of course, um, there's a first time for everything. All those awesome sayings. But here's what happened. About a month later, because again, like, you know, like I said, she, she actually tried it. She did save money. Um, her sister was able to talk her into attending a meeting we, we found, you know, because the excuse she used was, you know, really, I just don't want to drive way out to L.A. to do this. And, you know, we talked about how we could build, you know, PBRs, you know, but she was a real tough cookie, okay? But all of a sudden, we find out where the meetings are happening in, in, in Orange County, and, and we say, hey, we'll come out there, and we'll help you build it out there. And we're attending the, uh, the, the, the meetings run by another top leader in the industry back then. We were all in the same company, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Robert Hollis. Many of you may have heard of him. You know, again, absolutely one of the most dynamic presenters, trainers, and speakers in the industry has helped a ton of people. 
um, currently is in a different company, I think, or doing his own thing. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if he's uh, doing his own coaching classes still or what, but still awesome, right? One of the best. And again, she goes to this meeting and she's impressed. She's excited. All of a sudden, she's bringing people into the business. She's bringing people out to uh, presentations, right? Um, she's talking to her nephew because, you know, the her sister was trying to get her son involved. Her son wouldn't listen, but his favorite aunt is involved now. So now he's interested. And I'm telling you, you know, they all came to a national training. I, I think it was out in Michigan or D Detroit. They were excited about this business, okay? Some, some things happened, okay? Mr. Hollis left the company, and they were no longer as excited about that business. And I'm telling you guys, look, you, you can argue with me till you're blue in the face if you want to. Those who know the two gentlemen that I just named will vouch for me when I say, yeah, if you're hearing about this business or this industry from either one of these gentlemen, you're probably getting involved. You're looking for your, for your, for your, for your checkbook. And so why would one have an impact on her? You know what I'm saying? To where eh, it's okay, this business, I guess. I'll try this service out. Eh. To all of a sudden, I'm super excited. Well, the difference was a couple things. First, the, the, the location, driving to LA, that can be a lot of traffic, okay? But also, who's, who's in the room, right? That LA office was mostly African American. There were a few other uh, ethnicities building out of that office as well. Very few Caucasians in that office. I'm just being frank. Versus the Orange County office, which was mostly Caucasian. And hardly anything else. A couple of African-American couples here and there. Right? A few other eth eth ethnicities, but mostly Caucasian. And so the difference was who was in the room. And I'm telling you guys, this is not something that we should be shying away from or feel like we can't talk about it. It's just... It's a part of society. See, when we get into network marketing, we tell you to read books, we tell you to grow, we tell you to become a better person, but that's after you get into the industry. Before you get into this industry, you might think it's okay to be judgmental and, and racist and feel uncomfortable around races that aren't yours. That might feel like an okay thing to do. It's actually not okay. It's ignorant. It's hateful. It's a form of violence. It's passive aggressive. To be uncomfortable around people just because they're a different race than you are. That's a, a vibration that people can feel. So, so understand that, that, that you may not want to talk about it, and that's fine, but it's a reality. There are black people who are uncomfortable around a lot of black people. Because we live in a society that puts all these ideas and feelings into the people who live in it. So we're, we're all going to be subject to, to be products of this environment. And it's okay. Look, let's not hang too hard on it. Okay. It's a reality. It's, it's part of what we face. But what we're here to do as leaders is to push folks forward to say, Hey, look, let's, let's not be racist. Let's, let's not hate each other over simple, small stuff like that. Let's do business to, together. Let's make money together. What the MLM industry is, is an opportunity for us to redistribute wealth. It is to absolutely change where money goes and who it's going to. It's, it, it's an opportunity for us to, to take control of where that money is going. We can enrich society through this business model but there are going to be some roadblocks along the way. There are going to be some obstacles to overcome, like racism, like people joining your business. And maybe, because let, let me just be, be clear, there's a bunch of, uh, of white folks who I've done business with. They're more than willing to do business with a person of color. They don't care about that stuff. There's plenty of people out there like that, plenty. But I've, I've also come across situations where maybe they didn't mind doing business with me. But two or three, you know, levels down, they didn't really want to be part of a team that's being led by a black person. It, it happens, you guys, right? Where, where they would feel more comfortable in a company with more people who look like them. It happens. 
And we, we should be challenging that mindset, my opinion, here in business. Why not? We can, we can build not only a, a, a network marketing organization that makes more money than other or, or organizations doing it the way that we're doing it, but also, hey, if we don't shy away from this conversation, we can actually build an organization that's conscious, that's socially aware that, hey, we've still got some issues to work out and we can iron them out. But we can't iron them out if we hide from them, if, if we don't speak honestly about them, right? If we don't challenge folks to grow, to get better, and to maybe rethink some of their ideas in terms of, you know, how we view race, how we view, um, you know, some of the information that's been passed to us from previous generations. A lot to think about, I know. Go ahead and chew on it. Visit the one MLM system. Most importantly, visit the black folder. We'll link it up. Look, the, the, the black folder is a conversation. It's a bunch of videos that allow you to actually watch some, some content that relates to the African American experience within the United States and also frames that conversation around business, uh, around group ec economics as a solution to the problem that so many of us inherited. We didn't ask for the problem of being the descendant of 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 a of a people who were enslaved and a lot of things happened to our ancestors and it's important that we don't forget our history and understanding how it ties into our economic situations right because this is this is what's going on and so again in business you're gonna have to tackle race we can't Step around this stuff, especially not you and me, not as African Americans, because no matter how much we might want to uh, avoid it, we can't. Right? We might not want to, you know, identify as black, but we're not Rachel Dolezal, you guys. We we can't just create our own ethnicity and de de decide that that's what we are, because when people look at us, they're going to have their concepts and their ideas, and so again, that's what the black folder is for. Is for us to actually think about how we view one another, first and foremost, to, to really talk about how, how, how we need to do business with one another, first and foremost. But, but, you know, hey, you know, if you're a 